just just the whole um, project of democracy has has been reduced to a soundbite. It seems mm -hmm. to me in mm -hmm. this 21st century, when there was so much hope that things could be different. Mm -hmm. Well, they did kind of go south and different, but mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, but Dewey has written on this. Good lad, you know Henry Giroux says that uh, schools reflect society. And that's so. It if this is so, if his theory is mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. true, then oh. we are mm -hmm. in fact uh -oh. right right there. That's which would yeah. That's the book. That's the book we read. That's, you get you get what you deserve. <laughs> this mm -hmm. is it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One of the things that um, mm -hmm. Walter Parker, who also writes uh, uh. extensively on mm -hmm. democracy, has one of my. F favorite articles on teaching yes. against idiocy, a wonderful article by, by Walter Parker, in which just in the, the first two sentences, he takes the word idiot and moves it away from the pejorative, doesn't mm -hmm. know anything, and situates it in its home, original home, which is ancient Greece. And, and he said, you know, when in ancient Greece, in the seat of our democratic mm -hmm. ideals, um, anyone who only thought of himself, who did not participate in public life, mm -hmm. who had no idea or interest of the commons, mm -hmm. of the common good, so he was called an idiot. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important mm -hmm. for us to actually begin to think about those, not in terms of historical views, um, but to look at what counts today as democracy. Uh, it is the civics textbook, if, if that. Well, and often it gets to reduce to the soundbite version is mm -hmm. the right to vote. Mm -hmm. Ah, yes, the right If to you're vote. someplace, you have a right mm -hmm. to vote, you're in a democracy. Mm -hmm. And that's it. And, that's, and as a citizen, that's your only responsibility mm -hmm. is to go vote. Mm -hmm. So I'm talking to my <laughs> candidates, and I'm asking them, times do you hear the word democracy in your classrooms or in your um, the in the books you read mm -hmm. or when you go out into the schools and in your practica uh, not many and I said well then how many um, how many of you are um, sort of understanding and can articulate connections between democracy and education and it is um, oftentimes with a blank stare, <laughs> um, which is one of the reasons I use the Journal of Educational Controversy in my classroom as text, mm -hmm. because there's multiple perspectives, it requires engagement mm -hmm. across differences, mm -hmm. deliberative dialogue, and actually a practice of naming mm -hmm. the world mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. speaking mm -hmm. your voice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if we, if we um, in fact, if we are to um, take the view of the authors and see how, in fact, they're claiming that the whole democratic project is, in fact, uh, not just our, almost out our classroom doors, I think it's out of our school doors. One of the things that replaces it is deprofessionalization of teachers mm -hmm. in the form of textbooks, of um, incredibly enormous uh, power of test scores, mm -hmm. um, and also the way we ask our students to live in, in, within the school. Mm -hmm. So I ask candidates, what has been your experience in your high school or your middle school? any schooling. And it's a joke. So mm -hmm. yesterday, five, five people out of my class shared that they were ASB president or they'd been in ASB, but really we only got to do, uh, to talk about the color of something mm -hmm. or it was clearly nothing important that they got to do, which of course we could argue is seeding cynicism. Mm -hmm which is, mm -hmm. is the handmaiden mm -hmm. of idiots. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, it, because why wouldn't you want to be involved in the commons and the common good? Mm -hmm. Well, because it doesn't do mm -hmm. any good. Mm -hmm. because. But if the ways in which you are involved in the common good are insignificant. Yes. Well, mm -hmm. and it's interesting. I've, 
I've read <clears throat> kind of similar reports about high school experience with democratic education, and a lot of what I've seen tends to support the idea that where it exists, most of it is in elementary schools. Mm. And I think part of that is because elementary school teachers, at least historically, have had more control over what they do in their classrooms and how much time they spend mm -hmm. doing what. Mm -hmm. So we have the opportunity, like in my class, to have class meetings, to mm -hmm. have impromptu class meetings when there's an issue that comes up, and, and really live that voice and group decision-making and deliberating whenever I want to, really. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. in high schools, when are you going to do that? When they're in math from here to there, and PE and art and whatever, whatever, mm -hmm. they don't they don't create those opportunities in the same way, mm -hmm. not in an authentic, genuine way when it's really relevant mm -hmm. to the students. It's far more so. difficult to know who your students are as well. Mm -hmm. Oh, I mean, the, the problems are enormous. Mm -hmm. So I mm -hmm. take great pride mm -hmm. in being an elementary <laughs> school teacher in which I can't. But then mm -hmm. it's disheartening to me because I send my children off and then what? It's just you have mm -hmm. the same thing all over again. Mm -hmm. They've practiced, they've learned, they have an awareness and they go nowhere. Mm -hmm. And will, will those things stick with them mm -hmm. as they move on in their educational careers and don't have any other practice? I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, I think this is, again, going back to what the authors had to say, to me, this is probably one of their primary arguments in the book is, of course, we need to be moving in that direction and how do we do that? And that then takes me back to our question of, well, okay, so what is the book we wanted to read? And when I hear our part of the dialogue, I think, yes, yes, and then I think, and I want the people on the other end of the spectrum that have been labeled in the, you know, the category that's taking us down this hill, you know, high schools partially do that because of structure, partially do that because there's this economic impetus to, you know, perform, make sure you're prepared for college, make sure you get your degree. Mm -hmm. And so I would love it if this book had had more of a space for that other part of the dialogue, the whole economic piece that is integrally connected mm -hmm. to our, our mm -hmm. democratic system. Like, what, what do we do with that? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly.